Joining us now, Sal Khan, founder and CEO of Khan Academy, the education website that offers world-class instructional tests and videos for free. Sal, great to have you on the show again. It's been too long. What was your gut reaction to the news that the UC system, which represents some 280,000 students, basically said, no more, we're done. We're not using ACT or SAT anymore after the next couple of years to judge the readiness of applicants for college? Yeah, you know, it's one of those situations where I actually have a, a com competing, conflicted feelings about it. On on one side, standardized assessments have a place. They they can be a useful signal. They do correlate with how well uh, students are uh, ready for college. On the other hand, they can be anxiety-inducing. Uh, maybe people index a little bit too heavily on them. Maybe there's unequal access to it. And you know, we we have partnered with the College Board. We are the official SAT practice for the country. Uh, to help solve some of that inequity. Uh, so I completely get where uh, the regents, uh, why they thought about making this decision, but now they're going to have to think about what other signals, what other ways can they figure out whether students are college ready or not. Yeah, you actually do have some test prep on your website, which, by the way, is philanthropic. It is free so that people can use it for free. So everyone make your donations. Um, I think that's really important because this is world-class opportunity on your website. But what, as we look forward, do you really feel both Operation Varsity Blues and this COVID crisis have done to online education as so many people were locked down? Yeah, well, you're seeing a, I guess you could say a renaissance in, in online education and people in very fast order are adopting it. We've seen our traffic go up by a factor of three. We were serving uh, 20 million students a month before the crisis. Now our registrations are past 100 million uh, learners. Uh, we have uh, approaching 100 million minutes of usage per day. And you're seeing that across the board. And when you think about college, I think it's going to be really interesting this coming back to school uh, places. This is obviously in the UK, but Cambridge University has said they're going to be online all of next year. And a lot of universities are going to be online for the first semester. And so that's making a lot of students and families wonder, well, maybe there are lower cost alternatives to instead of getting 10, 20, 30 thousand dollars in debt, I can at least spend the first year, my freshman year, maybe my first two years uh, doing some type of online courses, start getting those credits. And then once schools open, I can then benefit from the, the quad and throwing Frisbees and, and the late dorm conversations w w when they exist. Yeah, I get it. I get it. You know, but every industry is is disrupted and who knows whatever that catalyst may be. Give me a sense of how you feel K through 12 education will forever perhaps be disrupted by what we've all learned from educating our kids at home. I have two who've been doing homework and Zoom classes. I know you've got three much younger kids. You know, what now? Because I've been looking and noticing advertisements for accredited K through 12 schools. That's become some kind of cottage industry. What do you think about that development? Yeah, you know, I think there is a class of families and, and children for whom pure virtual might work. Uh, but I think, especially if you have young children, you know, I've been trying to cope with my five-year-old for the last several weeks. Uh, th there's a much more than just the academic learning, uh, which in theory, you could get a lot of that virtually. You need the socialization. You need the support. There's even a child care aspect to it. So I think for most families, they're going to need some form of physical experience, and that's good for students. Now, with that said, when we talk to superintendents around the country, they realize that this coming back to school might set a new normal where some kids come part of the time, some kids don't. They might have an elderly relative. They might be immunocompromised themselves or a family member is. So they'll have to experience the school virtually for some time. And so that's going to create this world where I think even post-COVID, you're going to have this hybrid approach. There's going to be experiences that you can have in the classroom, but online is always an option. And essentially, learning won't be bound by time and space. I know that I turned to Khan Academy for my kids, I want to say, seven years ago. And you were founded in, in the 2000s by you, you, you to help your little cousins who needed some help. What are your most popular courses online and your test preps online? Yeah, you know, we started, and my little cousin is now 30 years old, so time goes by. Uh, but as you <laughs> mentioned, and, and I started tutoring tutoring family members back in 2004, word spread around my family that free tutoring was going on. And we set this up as a not-for-profit in 2009, and, and we became a real organization in 2010. Our most popular, what we're most known for mm -hmm. is math. We're often associated with videos, but most of 
what we invest in are the interactive exercises where kids can get as much practice as they need, learn at their own pace, teacher tools. We now have mm -hmm. science, biology, chemistry, physics. We just launched Khan Academy Kids, which is for early learners, age two to seven. That's in math, reading, and writing. Everything I'm talking about, as you mentioned, we're philanthropically supported. It's all free. Right. It's all not commercial. And it has some of the strongest efficacy studies, in fact, the strongest efficacy studies uh, behind it, better than anything you might be tempted to, to pay money for. We're also the official practice mm -hmm. partner with the College Board around the SAT. 70% of all American kids use that to prepare for the SAT. Well, I'm glad you mentioned the College Board. We did reach out to the College Board. They just came out with a statement, Sal, and in essence what they're saying, and I asked them, what do you think about the UC system dropping the SAT and ACT? And they said, quote, regardless of what happens with such policies, our mission remains the same, to give all students, and especially low-income and first-generation students, opportunities to show their strength. I know they give deals, but this is a $1 billion cottage industry with tutoring and test prep. And I'm not so sure it's the worst thing in the world that schools like Wesleyan are now test optional, Union College test optional, a whole bunch. There's an entire list of these. So, you know, in the end, can we just end with a final thought about that? Yeah, you know, I think there's a reality that throughout the world, if the affluent feel there's a, a way that resources could be used to better give their child pre preparation. You saw with the Varsity Blue scandal where it bordered into the or went into the illegal. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll try. So I think you can shift the rules. You can shift uh, what's used. But there'll always be these cottage industries around college admissions and prep. Now, I think the solution yeah. is actually to make more equitable tools so that students can get college ready. So I applaud the College Board for working with us. They actually give us resources so that we can give free SAT practice to the world. Uh, that's the type of thing that will allow more okay. students to become okay. college ready. Sal Khan. And Sal, as, as a UC kid, graduate, I, I wish that they hadn't had the SATs when I was there because they're kind of bomb. But I did promise our viewers I would show my Crocs. And it all goes into the fact that I bleed blue and gold for UC Berkeley. Yeah, Crocs sent me Cal Crocs. I mean, is this amazing or awesome. what? These are Cal Crocs. Uh, good to see you, Sal. It's great. Thank you for everything you've done. <laughs> Thanks for having me, Liz.